in my mind for quite a while, I, I kept thinking, how would that first Sunday when we resume Masses together look like? And what should I say on that Sunday? So I came up with lots of possible homilies. But then I realized I don't need to do that. I realized that the Word of God is so simple and so beautiful. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And how this Word of God speaks to us in a very particular way today. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, when Pentecost occurred, it was the right time. It was, the time was fulfilled. I don't know what's the right time to reopen Mass and to come back together. When the time is fulfilled, that's when we come together. And they were all in one place together. It's beautiful to be together again. Those of us who are watching from home, who are watching uh, through our live stream, for rightful reasons, maybe uh, staying home, uh, whether for health concerns or because of uh, limitations we have. Uh, we cannot have more than 25% capacity for now at church. We are all one in one place together. The church is our home. We are together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind and it filled the entire house in which they were. I hope you feel the Holy Spirit present right here, right now, where we are. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. Fire is the sign of God. Last night, unfortunately, our city seen fire but it was not fire from God it was a destructive fire and how sad that after 2,000 years we're still experiencing injustice and treatment of each other that is unbecoming not just of Christians but of a human being and that how we unfortunately respond evil with evil, to violence with violence. That's not how God works. God, the violence of the world, has taken it upon himself. That's why to the apostles after the resurrection, he shows his pierced side and hands, and he says, while well, he says to them, peace be with you, that peace has cost him his life. He defeated violence at the very root because he, said he has inaugurated a new world, a new way of living. And that's what the Holy Spirit did on Pentecost. They began to speak in different tongues. There was diversity. But each person was hearing the apostles speaking in their own tongues. So there was unity. There was diversity and there was unity. Diversity sometimes can be challenging and, and, and we can see only the differences, but actually it is an occasion for us to, to see the deep unity that exists among us. That deep unity starts first and foremost with us being created in the likeness and image of God, of human beings. And, and then as Christians we understand that even deeper. Because as St. Paul says, we were all baptized in one spirit. And there is no more Jew or Greek. There, was no more, there is no more slave or free person. There is no man or woman. We are all baptized into the same spirit. The Holy Spirit brings us together, brothers and sisters. And that's, that's the fire that we have to follow. That fire that brings renewal in the world brings something new according to God. The Gospel says that on the evening on that first day of the week, which is Sunday, the very day of the resurrection, when the doors were locked, the disciples were kind in kind of a lockdown for fear 
they were fearful. They were locked and they were fearful. And Jesus came in their midst, stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. Shalom. That is the peace of God that reconciles man with God and reconciles each person with one another. Receive the Holy Spirit, he said, after breathing on them. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. What is sin? Sin is missing the whole point of your life. That is what sin simply is. So, Jesus, in giving the Holy Spirit, in breathing the breath of life, of new life, on the apostles and on us. He does away with sin. He helps us to reorient our, reorient our lives towards God, towards good, towards charity, towards virtue. We know that the world is not changed by more evil. We know that the world is changed by more good. That is the answer. That is God's answer. So let us pray the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, in this day in which we are fearful for many reasons. We may be locked down in our hearts, if we're not in our houses. That the Holy Spirit may bring renewal, may renew the face of the earth, and that we may become agents of that renewal in the way we relate to God, in the way we treat one another in the way we look at our future, and in the way we look at our present. And our families, our cities, will look quite different. Let us pray for this Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth, for this fire, for this uh, life-saving breath of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.